RPD firmware try-in. Before you start the RPD firmware try-in, please remember to do one more important thing before the appointment is to take the framework out of the laboratory box. Check if the framework is really able to fit on the master cast. If you see the rest to rest seat, class to the tooth, or tissue stop to the edentor's ridge is not really fit on the master cast, then you have to return the cast to the lab, ask them to redo it. The second important is to check all the framework design is follow as your instructions. If it's not, you also need to send it back. This is a case that really happens in the UDM dental clinic. The students sent uh, the master cast out and received the framework. On the delivery day, patient already in the clinic bench, and student opened the box and he found out that the framework seems not really the same as his drill. You can see I point out that the major connector's distal extension is not really follow as our instructed. It's much more shorter. When we look into a detail, we found more and more arrows. So first of all, the major connector shape in the interior is not really follow as we draw. And we can see the lab technician add extra rest, extra minor connectors, even extra and round reciprocal arm design onto the tooth, which is not what we request in the first beginning. Even on the occlusal part, we request the meso and distal rest seat, but finally the lab technician connected both together. When you look down the lower, it, what it happens? We request to do a middle facial undercut. So you can see that we mark the undercut location on the middle facial. Even the lab technician use a red pencil to mark the proper uh, eye bar location. But no matter what, when we see a cast with the model, that eye bar is on the mesial facial is not on the middle facial, so it's a wrong class location. So what it happens later? We have to say sorry to the patients. Patient walk out the clinic frustrated because he took his day off and he couldn't do anything. The procedure still be stopped before the impression. Also, we may lose the trust of the patient because patients think we are not really take care of his case. So please remember that before you do the delivery, try to have some time to take the framework out of the box, review your design, be sure it's okay for your delivery. If everything goes smoothly, then you will do the framework try-in in the clinic. Uh, you will use those materials to check the fitness of the framework to the natural dentition. So you can use a clue or you can use a fee checker. Right now we use more uh, on a clue because it will be easier to apply and reapply and check and see. However, if you walk outside, you may still see some dentist use a fee checker to check the fitness. So the procedure to check the framework fitness is to use the disclosing media like a clue or the fee checker to identify the interference to completely seated the removal partial dental framework. So if you are not able to see that, you have to see what's an immature contact area and try to adjust it. After you can fit the framework to the tooth and edentorous area, then you will check occlusion. You have to adjust the seated framework to the opposing occlusion. Remember, you have to allow all the natural dentition to maintain the same contact as before. It means that 
with framework or without the framework, all the natural teeth contact should be the same. If you put the framework and change the contact, that means that the framework really interfere with the natural tooth contact, then you have to do occlusal adjustment. As you can see, the picture shows. So sometimes when you see it and you found out that you are not able to fully seat the framework onto the tooth, then you have to take it out and really review those criteria, critical area to find out if you have any show through spot. And then to use uh, the burr to do adjustment. Finally, you want to see the rest to the rest seat, guide plan, to the proximal plate, eye, the eye bar or the clasp to the tooth will all follow your design and fit with the tooth. Then you ask patient to occlude it to bite down to find out if you change the occlusion. If it's not, then you finish your framework trying. They have some common critical area that will prevent the seating. So first of all, you used to happen on the proximal plate, means that it may have uh, some immature contact to the two sky plan. Or sometimes you will see it was on the rest to rest seat position. One most common to ignore is from the minor connector around the tubes, just like as we saw on the pictures. So sometimes it may happen is that you have a minor connector try to connect all the component to the major connector, and that part is not really uh, broke out well, so eventually become a stop point. That's why you have to read through all the integral surface of a framework and try to figure out where is the immature contact and to adjust it. The last will be on the clasp. Sometimes the clasp design was too tight to the tooth, so you are not really able to see it. But if you plan your clasp and shape the tooth contour fit well, most of the time, the class shouldn't be an issue, and it should be most commonly happens on the proximal plate, rest, or the minor connector around the two.